Science. Retired teacher Lil Karen Scarrett counts herself lucky after having a close call with a bacterium resistant to many antibiotics. The Norwegian grandmother had just arrived on holiday in India when she broke her leg in a car crash. While at hospital in India, she picked up a bug before being flown home to Norway. From the airport and to the hotel, um, there was this accident. I got home eventually. Well, I got a phone from the doctor and he said that um, I had this klebsiella that I had found um, a bug which were very dangerous. I had to be very careful and uh, people around me had to take care also. Lil Karen had been colonized but not infected by a potentially lethal bacterium. The strain of Klebsiella she was carrying is so resistant that there's only one antibiotic available that can be used to treat it. What's important in Lila Karen's case is that the Norwegian healthcare system was able to immediately screen her and put her in an isolated room until they had the results. This is very important because it probably prevented uh, the hospital of having uh, a spread of this very resistant bacterium. Norway has a great track record on finding and containing antibiotic resistant bacteria like those picked up by Lil Karin. One reason is that patients hospitalized abroad are screened and isolated. So there's a special ventilation system. So when you walk in, there's a little uh, separate room in front where you first you enter, you close the outer door, then you'll go through the washing procedure, and then afterwards you can enter the patient room. The other side to dealing with resistance in bacteria is not to allow it to develop in the first place. Doctors here in Tromsø follow a strict discipline of using antibiotics correctly and only when necessary and testing patient samples to make sure the correct antibiotics are being used. And here we can see some examples of the, of the uh, tests we're doing where you can see that the, the, kind of the white carpet on the bottom of the, the dish is the, the bacteria and then we can see antibiotics being impregnated into these strips. And when there is a zone around, you can see that uh, the uh, substance is effective to kill or inhibit the microorganism. Whereas when they uh, grow all up to the strip, it means that this drug is not effective. And as you can see on this one, we don't have much choice. It's actually just a single substance here which will have any effect on this microorganism. Resistance can develop for several reasons. When too many antibiotics are used, when patients aren't given the right antibiotics, take them for the wrong amount of time or when they don't need them. Bacteria can also mutate and develop resistance on their own. And the problem is widespread. We associate uh, antibiotic resistance with the hospital frequently. But it's important to note that actually it exists in the community as well. We've seen over the past few years that some bacteria actually, through sustained efforts that certain countries have, have applied, have been able to decrease their rates of resistance. On the other hand, we have other bacteria that have uh, slowly been increasing throughout Europe and the world. That increase is a threat not only in hospitals, but also in the wider community. Resistant bacteria can be picked up anywhere, as Italian university professor Paolo Visca found out when he set off from the port of Nettuno near Rome on a fishing holiday. After a few days, he fell ill with a serious urinary tract infection. In the initial stages, I had a classic septic fever, shaking chills, profuse sweating, not being able to go to the bathroom to urinate, and so the problem was really serious at the beginning. In Paolo's case, he had an E. coli uh, urinary tract infection, which is the most common bacterium that causes these infections. In his case, he had a, an E. coli which was resistant to multiple antibiotics. And what's significant is that he took an antibiotic that should have worked. Uh, and it didn't because it was resistant to that and a number of other ones. It took two months and three courses of different antibiotics before Paolo's infection was successfully treated. Nobody knows where he picked up the infection. So what's he learned from the experience? 
Never self-medicate. Never treat your illness by yourself, thinking that you know how to treat it. Always go and see a doctor, your GP. Both doctors and patients have their role to play, and campaigns like European Antibiotic Awareness Day aim to keep the issue in the public eye. Here in Bologna, Maria Luisa Moro has spent the last decade promoting the message that antibiotics shouldn't be overused and should be used correctly. This is one of the drawings made by children in our campaign for the prudent use of antibiotics. We asked children to draw what they were thinking, what they knew about bacteria and antibiotics. Parents are one of Maria Luisa's priority groups, along with the elderly residents of retirement homes. The most common infections, those for which antibiotics are mostly used, are upper respiratory infections in children, because children have an elevated risk of infection, often from viruses which are incorrectly treated with antibiotics. The other main group under risk of infections, inappropriately treated with antibiotics, are urinary infections in adults. The threat is growing since new strains of bacteria resistant to antibiotics are being spread across Europe. But experts are convinced that this threat can be contained. I think that it's possible in the future if everyone is able to... to uh, use antibiotics correctly and if infection control practices are used correctly I think that we can turn the tide but it has to be done in a very structured manner it has to be taken very seriously because this is an issue of patient safety an issue of patient safety that's left lasting memories for those who faced infection from these very resistant bacteria the so-called superbugs when I get a distance of it then I realize more that how serious it was. When I was in the middle of it, I just had to survive from day to day. In my case, I was lucky, and I consider myself relatively lucky since a series of favorable circumstances made it possible for me to receive the correct treatment in the end. But I think I ran a serious risk. A risk that we could all face unless antibiotics are only used at the right time and in the right way.